David Johnson, master futurist. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Um, you know, when I think about cybersecurity, we're always defending against the here and now. But you're here to help us with threat casting. Can you talk a little bit about what threat casting is and why it's so important, especially in cybersecurity? Certain. So threat casting is a process that looks 10 years out and it uses social science, technical research, economics to push people to think 10 years out, to get past the present day and come up with a range of possible and probable threats. And then we get a diverse group of people together to then look backwards and say, how do we disrupt, mitigate and recover from them? So it allows us not only to look at the problems of today, but think a little bit further out so we can prepare for the problems of tomorrow. So I think one of my, and I'm gonna say this to you as a futurist, one of my pet peeves is when people ask me about the future, because I think the future is an amalgamation of many different futures. It's the future of, bre of, of breaches. It's the future of privacy. It's the future of, you know, Internet of Things. It's like a lot of different futures put together. As a futurist, how should we be now looking at the future in terms of cybersecurity? And how does this framework help us with that? You couldn't be more right. So there is not just one capital F future, especially when we're thinking about the future of security and the future of financial systems. There are multiple markets, multiple people, multiple types of breaches and frauds and crimes that are going on out there. So what future casting allows us to do is not only look out at a single future, what we do is we get a group of people together to look at multiple futures, multiple futures across the world, multiple futures involving different types of people, and we do it multiple times. So what it does is it takes that breadth of futures and allows us to concoct all these different futures and then take a step back and say, okay, what do we need to do as an organization? What do we need to do as an industry to prepare for those futures? I think one of the biggest things that I've learned from you, just from spending some time with you, is when we look out, it enables us to disrupt the future. And I think that's really, really important. Can you talk a little bit about the gates and the flags that we use now after, after we look out and kind of back into it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we look out that 10 years, you get past the next big thing. Mm -hmm. You get past the thing that everybody's worried about right now, and it allows you to get a little bit further out. But then you can then turn around and look backwards and say, okay, how do we disrupt it? How do we mitigate it? And so what we build into it are these gates and flags. And gates are the things that we have control over. What can we do as an organization and an industry to get ready? But then the flags are the part that's really cool. So flags are the external indicators, the things that we don't have any control over, but that will show us as a business that we are meaningfully moving towards a specific threat area. And there's not just one flag, there's multiple areas. So it allows us to be prepared on Monday to start mm -hmm. looking for these threats. So I'm actually excited that we're actually doing threat casting. I think it's really, really important for our future, for us to be prepared. How, how pervasive, how broad is this? How many other companies are actually doing this? And is this something that, you know, we're championing as, you know, trying to be um, the absolute best and absolute most prepared in cybersecurity? So threat casting has been around for about 10 years. So as a future forecasting, it's not new, but it's not old and accepted. And mm -hmm. so it is quite new and you do see different people using it. It's used quite a lot in high tech. Um, it's used quite a lot in sort of government and military areas. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to sort of finance, people are just starting to use it. Um, I can tell you when I go back and I talk to people who do threat casting, actually MasterCard as an organization has been seen as somebody who's really kind of leading this mm -hmm. because this is now our second or third year kind of working together of kind of identifying these different areas. So I really do believe that MasterCard is kind of setting the pace and actually is really poised to start leading, to start going out and actually going to the broader industry to say, hey, we know that this problem is not just a MasterCard problem. This is a whole of industry problem and you can really convene people together to really prepare for that disruption. One of the biggest outtakes that I've gotten so far is the inclusion part, the inc you know inclusive thought processes, the diverse thought processes and diversity of thought. Can you talk a little bit how, about how the role diversity and inclusion of different thoughts, different ethnic, diff you know, ethnic values, different cultures, how that plays into threat casting? So diversity is a requirement for threat casting because we know science teaches us this, economics teaches us this, the more diverse your ecosystem, the more diverse the pool of people that you're working with, the better your solution, the better your, um, your 
economy. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, threat casting really strives to say, okay, how are we making sure to have the broadest breadth of people? And that's from a gender standpoint, an ethnicity standpoint, a domain expertise standpoint, and also bringing in different people from the industry as well. Having that diverse ecosystem of people is a necessity because the more diverse we are, the better the threats, the better the models, and the better the solutions we'll come up with. So I think that a lot of times we're siloed. We think a lot about financial services or, you know, whatever industry we're in. In threat casting, do you think we should continue to focus on that specific area? Or do you think that now that we're talking about diversity and diverse thought, is there value in financial services, maybe pairing up with another industry and kind of making the, the threat casting value proposition there? Is there, is there any value in that? I think that the financial industry has a real big role to play in this future. As we start looking at specifically fraud and cyber threats and this really kind of widening attack plane of where we know things are going to go, we know this is going to happen. I believe that sort of financial services is a leader in that area because they're already thinking that way. MasterCard is already thinking in that way and can actually start to help other industries Think about it. It actually can say, we've done this before, let us help you, but then also let's work together. Because that's one of the things we've always learned from threat casting, especially what we're doing right now, is that we need more communication. We need more people to be involved because the bigger that conversation, the better our security. So my last question for you really evolves around the life cycle of threat casting. Is this a one and done type of thing? Like, do, can I do this now, you know, after today is over and not have to revisit it for another two or three years? Or is this something that's iterative that we may, we must continue to do? Yeah, threat casting is a process. It's a way of thinking. It is, a, as you get into the details of it, it's not just a one and done because it's very pragmatic. It mm -hmm. says, okay, these are the threats, but then what do you need to do to disrupt, mitigate, and recover? What do you need to do Monday? What do you need to do two years from now? Who do you need to involve in it? And it's not just a process, but it's a framework for thinking, for processing new information, for when there's a new breach, how does that affect your threat future of what you're coming up with? And sometimes it might not be this big event like we're doing mm -hmm. here today. Mm -hmm. It could be much smaller. I think as it gets distributed throughout not only MasterCard, but distributed throughout the industry, it makes everybody stronger the more they do it. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. We've learned so much and we're definitely going to keep digging in and keep driving to the future threats and being prepared and leading the way. Thank you so much. Thank you.